This is a recording of an interview between Chancellor E. Snow of Beverly Hills and Mr. Stephen Reese of Simi Valley, California. Mr. Reese has drilled water wells in Simi Valley and other places in California. Steve, I have a letter from Dr. Walter Russell of the Walter Russell Foundation in Swannanoa, near Waynesboro, Virginia, in which he refers to your primary water. I thought you might like to have some of these read to you so you can comment on them. So I'll read a paragraph and then you reply interested us immensely and gave me one particularly great jolt of extreme pleasure from one sentence issued by your geochemist who described his primary water as water which has not yet been born. I instantly responded within myself with the unspoken thought which, if put into words, would be, thank God that there is at least one man who will understand and believe me when I open up that as yet untouched upon explanation of what water actually is. Does that sound to you? That is absolutely correct. Uh, I can very well understand his... Uh, feeling in regards to it, uh, he might have been all alone in the world all those years in his thoughts and his knowledge, and he felt that there is simply not another person alive who can see it his way, which is the only way and the right way. We are unfortunately uh, refusing to observe nature. We are constantly blindfolding ourselves to what is going on in front of us. Why that should be done by all these millions and millions of people, I don't understand. I myself can't do it, try as uh, if I want to. I have to see it and I have to question and I have to observe and I have to think about it. I can't close it out of my mind. It's an unknown fact. The so-called unknown, that is the only thing that disturbs me, the only thing that interests me. There's no other thing to conquer or other work to do except to search into those unknown things, or rather ununderstood. Steve, uh, have you ever felt in your experience with primary water once in a while that you'd like to have had one man who understood you? Same thing. I, I'm in the same position here then. Yeah. Uh, these, these men of much greater training and understanding and uh, information and intelligence, I still can't see, uh, get him to fall in line, to even give it a second thought. That's the natural regular That's scientist. That's the regular scientist. Now they call themselves scientists. I can't see where they're very scientific. <laughs> At least you didn't get very far with them yourself. No. Well, it's another paragraph. Dr. Russell says, Hold on to that man and believe on him. Do not make the mistake of so many who call great visionaries fantastic dreamers. He really visions ahead as to what is to come. Though he may be working in the dark of lack of actual knowledge of how God put untold quantities of water into untold quantities of dry, hot, greatly compressed minerals, which all newborn planets are. Now that's not absolutely correct. It, it is simply the words that I could not find. I, my lack of the English language wouldn't give me an opportunity to put these thoughts as I feel them 
into words. Uh, he is absolutely correct. That in thought that. of the compressed minerals of the newborn right. planets is uh, my idea. While well, uh, in a very uh, incomplete state of explanation, or to give explanation thereof for it now, is absolutely positively sound. Uh, there is no such thing as impossible. I am not dwelling or wasting time on impossible things or impossibilities. Granted that I am still sane. I could not dwell on anything that is impossible. I am only dwelling on things that are ununderstood or unknown. But within the range of possible accomplishment. Steve, I am reminded of one of the sentences that Dr. Russell speaks of frequently. He says, all questions are answerable in the light. Right? Thou art the light. Thou canst answer them. Absolutely correct. Ignorance is darkness. There's no question. And in fact, that is so clearly expressed uh, and defined that we find that already in the Bible. Thousands of years ago, that statement was appropriate. It so still you, is. You feel, then, is that as you ask these questions, Keep searching for the answer. Right. I'm the trying to get come. light into a dark nothingness. Here's another paragraph. He is right in principle, but experiment and research without knowledge of the construction of matter might accidentally stumble on good results, but knowledge cuts out time-consuming, money-wasting experiment and secures its results unfailingly in the shortest possible length of time. That is why we are going to build our laboratory and produce these miracles quickly and directly, which science says cannot be done. Correct. How do you like that attitude? That is absolutely correct. The experience, the sum total of knowledge in our industry, in our uh, human behavior, must be indexed, scientifically marked down, step by step. And if we are beginning to form an organization and a group of us men getting together to index our work, our petrographic, our crystallographic, our geological structural conditions, I am sure that it will be only a short while from now to train men and go out and determine the location and produce water wherever we wish within that, I say, uh, structural geological areas suitable for such work. And they are almost everywhere. The world over. There's no limit, state or country. And that must be done. We have to fall in line. We will not ever get results by preaching, by talking. There isn't maybe another man outside this Dr. Russell and myself now who are susceptible even to consider this. I, as far as I know, that's correct. Right. Now, for that reason, we are absolutely getting off the track. If we wish to educate, talk about, or daydream about it, put the wells down as I have done. If uh, 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 places involved where money values change hands rapidly or could be gained, great gains can be made, get a fee. And as I have demonstrated in the past, by the ruination of nothing, but I'll produce the wealth. And that is the only way we will get any step forward, by producing a couple of hundred more of those wells, as you fellas have seen I have already in the past. These results will eliminate all the conversation, the no, and all, and all obstructions. And you feel as this uh, knowledge is accumulated and revealed, and gain it, then you can scientifically go ahead with your... How do we synchronize and index that work properly? All the speculation or the haphazard mis and hidden mis uh, uh, proposition is out. Fine. We must come down to a scientific approach to that. Now, by this I mean to say that I wouldn't, like the oil industry, spend 50 years producing wells and billions of dollars a year in come up with one well producing against 26 dry holes, which is the record last year. After 50 years, 
because those fellas, these fools today, are still looking for the organ, organic uh, origin of oil, which is stupid, absolutely stupid. Oil is the same as water, as metal, as mineral. It has nothing to do with the organic, the marine life. Steve, you've uh, remarked sometime about the basic principle of being a monoatomic cycle principle or something like that. Just what do you mean by that? By that I mean that we start from zero and go through the different forms of uh, compression and density back into zero. Through a cycle of... Uh, from gas to gas. Step to step. From nothing to nothing. Ever repeating going on. That's what you mean by the monoatomic cycle. Right. Here's another paragraph. I have full and complete knowledge of that miracle of water, which your inspired geochemist is visioning. I have full and complete knowledge of a hundred other miracles of matter transformation. That's correct. Now, where is intelligence? What are we doing in our institution and in our schools, in our uh, polytechnics and caltechnics and what? Why are we uh, refusing to lift the blinds and see the light? Well, Explain it to me. I am certainly not ever finished in school. I had a good start, a good foundation. And when the Kaiser lost his job, I was through. <laughs> so I had to go out and educate myself. And my education was nothing but just poor, common, plain observation. There is so much to see everywhere. Study nature, observe nature, watch the rocks, watch the plants. You've been uh, seeking to learn how nature functions and operates. Right. You know that's where you get your That's knowledge. correct. Mm -hmm. Well, he says, um, I have full knowledge of a hundred other miracles of matter transformation which science has not yet dreamed of because there is a whole world of new knowledge tied up in the four space octaves below hydrogen. Below hydrogen, yeah. That science has not yet acknowledged the presence of even though I have charted them distinctly and shown actual proof of their existence. Right, because these fellas are still teaching today and they're starting with one with their hydrogen, just as if there was a beginning. There is none. There's only a circle, a wheel, you keep rolling. Keeps returning to Quite the Quite certainly. Uh -huh. Your solution of your water problem lies within the four space right. 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 I understand that. Right? Yes, I understand that. I again charted them in the new book and told more of them than I had ever done before and carefully copyrighted all I have said for future protection. But I can say but little, for science resists me as though I do not exist. Have you ever had anything like that, Steve? Well, if, if a man of his caliber is being resistant, you can just imagine I'm being good. <laughs> You appreciate what he's up against. I know, uh, if his time is going to be resistant, I'm just not existing, that's all. I <laughs> feel that you have a comrade in arms. Anyway. Right. And I like to trail him. And his experience, his knowledge, and his education is invaluable so that we leave some results behind for the value and the benefit and the use of the future generations. Oh, well, that's wonderful. Once again, if you mention the word snow, to the average man, he will think of it as frozen rain. He could not possibly think of it as a metal, as I do. That's right. It is as I know it can be found by greater freezing. Correct. Snow crystals are hexagonal in their crystal structure. Right. I could point out to you many metals which are but frozen snow crystals. Right. Metallurgy itself is such a great, uh, what do you call it, uh, subject. Yes. And it's so little understood or read about or praxis or any attention paid to. Whereas the, the crystal world 
is the index, is the fingerprinting of life itself. Haven't you said sometimes, Steve, that the rocks, the granites that we walk on are just frozen water? Yeah, solid water. Right. Well, it seems to be about... Not wholly applicable, but just about, uh, to a large extent, correct? Some relationship, yeah. Nature will release that water in great quantities a trillion years from now. That's correct. When this planet gets out where Jupiter now is. Right. Right. But if you know the way nature does it, you can do it. For you have the same planet and the same tool. That's correct. Absolutely correct. Aren't you uh, sort of releasing water that might otherwise not come out for another trillion years? Maybe to recrystallize it. Uh -huh. It might be become water of crystallization if I do not penetrate the crust to bring it to the surface in its present state. Yes. And it might then not and be for... And if you, if you consider the water so crystallized on the planet now, on the lithosphere, it is many times the water present in the ocean today. It is a great thing, no question, and that is only the beginning. When we have once demonstrated that we can get nature to... It will be an easy step to convince them that there is further search to be made and further work to be done to get all the things to sustain life. That was to make living comfortable. You have already said that, haven't you? The water might be, or the oil might be, well, that we know for sure. sure. Uh, yeah. Certainly. And so are the metals and the minerals in the whole, in the whole chain. Nothing, nothing but stability. Nothing but the refusal to think with the mechanism and the machinery we have, will destroy us. What we need on the planet. What we need is knowledge. Then. That's all. In the willingness to apply it. You see? But if we are going to close our minds and keep closing our minds, this human family must perish. Well, we look to you and Dr. Russell to keep us from doing that. He says, your chemist has the seed of the idea, else he would never have used that phrase, water which is not yet born, right? nor would he have used the word primary water, nor would he have stated that primary water was water which was on its way to rock crystals, if he had not had a flash of cosmic vision. That's right. The one mistake of that last phrase is that what he terms primary water is not on its way to rock crystals, but from them. Under the, under the lower levels of the lithosphere in the zone of saturation and fluidity, yes. There, there is a secondary crystalline water the formation of which we understand very well in metallurgy. That's uh, another form yeah. which it takes. Re, Reassociation, disassociation principle. That's the cycle of the right. water and so on. Right. For you to succeed gloriously and fully in what you are doing, that flash of vision of your chemist is not enough. You need the knowledge of the constitution of matter which will tell you what water is and how it is born and what is the seed of it from which it is born. Right. Our atmosphere was all hydrogen long ago. Right. There was no oxygen in it. Couldn't be. Water had not been born. That's right. Wetness was not yet in the planet or its atmosphere. Right. There was not but dryness and the heat of vast compression. Right. Do you agree with that? Sir? I agree with that in every, every way. It, I'm only lacking the faculty of expression. Uh -huh. 
And in my own particular work, when I am out doing my work, I'm not talking English. I have my own coin terms and words in German. Naturally, it being my mother language. Of course you are. Which I wouldn't dare to pass on. <laughs> mm -hmm. But they need to be converted into... Right. And I, I had in the past neither the, uh, the, the support nor the cooperation to waste any time on it. I knew that the answer will be more and more and more well it's in an area where dry holes were drilled. Right adjacent to it. And water was vital. So I went out to work to produce the water. The the uh, expression or language, I will get a lot of help after I got another hundred or two of those. <laughs> I will have a lot of them. And of course this to me is a, uh, uh, a sun shine. See? This is sunshine to me when I get a man of his caliber to know what we are doing or I try to do. Who is a man with intelligence and a training and understanding that knows I'm not crazy. Well, you seem to respect each other in that regard. Right. There were no rock crystals. If you would know more of what I mean, subject some rock crystals weighing two ounces to the heat of an electric furnace you will find about a fifth of an ounce of gray powder left as a residue. Correct. If you examine this under a microscope, you will find that it is devoid of any crystal structure whatsoever. Right. You right. agree with that? Be there, the heat has dissociated. And so the uh, rock crystals, right. or the crystals have disappeared. Right. Dissociation. Water is a product of your body and the forests of the earth are endless, repetitive products. Water has many stages of growth. Many is right. The primary water you speak of is a secondary stage. Yes, from its original. Uh, that is right. It is definitely a secondary. The water we drink is a third stage. Mm -hmm. And the heavy water which your aid found is a fourth stage. Right. And there are others, right. all of which have been extruded from the planet, as your body and mine have been extruded, or should we say, born. And all must be returned to the planet as rains return or rebirth, or as your body and mine must be returned to it as death on its way to rebirth. To rebirth a new life, new cycle. You um, already have said something the other evening about the cycle of life and yes. death as repetitive. Right. What is your thought about that? That is correct. And I also have mentioned to you, uh, prior to the appearance of this letter, that that wasn't water. Very long ago and beyond from the present day area and its present consist uh, uh, consistency we have it here are coming out of the well. I haven't gone in very deeply at the time, expressing my thoughts or in my, uh, 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 what would you say, uh, explanation, explanation of it, for one major reason. While I sense it and feel it, you see, uh, I still haven't got the word to, uh, to uh, apply it properly. I know. I'm very reluctant to uh, go into that very deeply. Now, this man is far more capable to talk and bring some understanding to a third person. As he expresses as I am. words here, you yeah. uh, follow those words yes. as satisfactory. Absolutely. If you mention the word ice to any man, he thinks of it as frozen water, or water which has taken on a crystalline form of hexagonal shapes and structure. That same man would not think of a granite rock as ice. But I think your chemist does. I do. <laughs> do you? I've been talking to my friend right for years about that. <laughs> well, that's it. And that is what it is. Right. But it will not melt at 33 degrees, nor will its structure and design be hexagonal. It will be cubed right. instead, for it is heavier water, frozen more solidly. That explanation... Uh, That's correct. You agree with that? Mm -hmm. And then... My old Professor Birkenbach from 
the IT fireman in Ludwigshafen and the Rhine been talking to me 30 years ago about that when I was a youngster. That same... Tramping in the Alps on vacation trips. <laughs> Over the granite and the Dolomite country there. And that's the uh, theory you've been using in your studies? I've followed ever since then. Right. And what I lack in the ability to explain the uh, theory in use the words I have gained in my experience of underground conditions in mining and metallurgy, uh -huh. ge uh, structural geology. And uh, on that, of course, uh, I have been successful. Then I could apply my knowledge of the origin of water to the structural conditions and produce results. And get the wells. And get the wells. The rest of us can drink yeah. the water. Now with all the knowledge on the water cycle, you must still know where to drill those fellas by structural geology, petrography and crystallography and rock chemistry. Otherwise, you have just a chance to drill 500,000 wells on each acre of land and miss 490,000 of them. <laughs> I know that your experience in that practical location is invaluable. Dr. Russell says nature will release that water in great quantities. Well, we read that a um, trillion years from now when this planet gets out where Jupiter now is. But he says that we have the tools and we can release it now. Right. Steve, you were mentioning a while ago in the event that this should be a message to Dr. Russell that you, what would you think about having a talk with him sometime? Uh, I will in the very near future after we catch up some of that very pressing work. Uh, right now I'm drilling another well there in Semillas. You know that situation. That's underway. There are such... Great values involved, and of course, people with large money investments uh, are uh, entitled to demand your services right now, right. and their money is out on a, on a limb. And uh, I'll be catching up in the next couple of months completely. And at leisure, when Dr. Russell ever feels that he wants to talk to a individual that uh, Frankly, admits he isn't an academically trained person. He is. I'm not ranking with him. I don't expect to. Uh, but I would like to question, have him question me and get my idea. And I know that he can be of great help to me. Though comes gradually and of course so much more rapidly to a situation where we can, with more assurance, drill those wells with far more assurance and assured success. Today I am very cautious in my location. I uh, bypass most of the possibilities by the simple reason that I am not justified. I feel I can't embarrass this expenditure or that expenditure for that work. But I know that it could be or should be done. So I'm only picking the A1 selections. And that is easy as long as there is no competitor involved. <laughs> and I sure haven't got any yet. <laughs> and you feel that as your knowledge of these things extends, then you can move with greater right. certainty into these other areas. That's correct. And as we get more, I have learned with every hole I drilled. Of course. With every one I have drilled, I have learned. And none of them has come out alike. There are different uh, things involved in every one. And I know that uh, between the two of us, if for no other reason at all, but for the great relaxation, you see, to know here we are two of us grouping around, trying to bring some light into it, instead of just one, I felt I was absolutely alone, and I suppose he certainly felt he was alone. Very much so, apparently. Well, maybe sometimes we are four, and then we are six, and then we are twelve. Huh? That's it. And that's all it needs. That's right. And I still say, if we don't, this, this people, as we know, living today and society is going to perish. They are growing and growing in numbers, and their country does not increase one acre. And what's left? Wars, stealing from other nations, only to find some more arid regions.
and again a shortage of what? That's yeah. the problem. But that doesn't solve the problem. What was this unusually large well that you conceived of? Just maybe a hundred thousand dollars would drill a well. Yes, in some volume. In some areas, we can get that well, five thousand and ten thousand gallon volumes. If your structural geology is well worked out, that uh, that I have no doubt at all, because nature has proven to us the possibility itself by hundreds of these enormous springs, which invariably are in the high elevations, solid. Rock for the country, basic rocks, granites, and underlying rocks. No soil, no sand, no crevices, no interstices. No chance of water to accumulate from snows or rain from from the precipitation cycle. Furthermore, above the runoff and the drainage areas, invariably you find them above, and regardless of summer or winter. Dry or wet cycles, their flow is constant, is uniform. Their chemical analysis on their temperature. They are new waters, absolutely newborn waters. And here nature has given us a chance to see. But we are worse than the monkey. If you lock a monkey in a cage with a big bunch of banana hung on the roof and leave two or three boxes in the cage, he'll go hungry for two days. The third day, he's, he puts these boxes on top of one another and he'll get the banana. But we haven't got sense enough to play monkey. 